night. Um, you know, got a few different goodies from our friends at Sephora. This I Love Bloom palette. How pretty is this packaging, front and back. I Love Bloom. Freshen up your everyday look with this palette. Seven creamy matte shimmer and metallic eyeshadows, including a large base shade, contain chamomile oil and come in a range of wearable neutrals with floral inspired pops of color. So this portable palette features a full size mirror, perfect for creating stunning eye looks at home or on the go. What's not to love, right? That's incredible. And so this is what it looks like. It's, you know, I think it's a serviceable neutrals palette. Um, you know, the packaging makes it seem like there might be some rose shade in it, but they seduced me with the prettiness. Uh, I also got this S Clean palette, which is a clean, bouncy eyeshadow palette. And I like the fact that it has these rubber bands on it so you can secure it closed when you're at home or on the go. It has a very secure lid that kind of encircles the palette itself. So this bad boy is not gonna flop open. Um, it doesn't look like the shadows are, you know, dry and crumbly or they're not gonna fall all over the inside of your purse. It's very, it's very gold and bronze. So let's see what we can do with this. And let's see. I also got this clean velvet cream blush palette and I think there's a couple of different ones of these I think there's a one that's oh I do have another one that's purple these are more sort of pink orange and bright and then just for the sake of completeness let's take a look at this other as clean clean velvet cream blush palette in some darker shades it invites you to touch swipe and blush so you know let's try to work maybe in this beauty exploration I won't even call it a tutorial maybe we'll use the darker shades uh tomorrow morning after we take a COVID test and then for now we'll get into these paler shades and see what we're working with so I watched Kristen Dominique, and she was talking today about starting your makeup look by getting your brow pencil in your brows, curling your lashes, moisturizing your lips. Now, I always keep my lips moisturized, whether that's with um, something like this. Uh, I heard someone pronounce this today. Malin and Goats? This to me reads more like melon and gets. I wonder what the proper way is to pronounce it, but it is a daily protection, soothing treatment, advanced hydration formula. Love this product. Um, even, you know, regular unbranded petroleum jelly is fine as well. And what else did she say? Moisturize lips, put pencil in your brow because then it'll, it will adhere better. Now, for me, I never have bare skin. I never am unmoisturized. I, especially if I'm leaving the house, I'm not going to not wear sunscreen. So I'm a little confused about how these things are supposed to adhere best. But for example, we did get into this highbrow, this minted highbrow pre precision pencil the other day. It is light brown in color, um, but without putting foundation on, she suggests that you should get this on your face and then put on a little mascara. But we'll at least try the part that's about getting this pencil on the face because I have to admit, sometimes the pencils don't really adhere that well and I see people making very satisfying hair-like strokes on their YouTube videos. And I, I kind of have ambition to be in that club. I want to have a longer, I want to extend the tail of my brow in a way that at least suggests hair. 
right? I've heard people talk about the importance of creating some depth and volume at the bottom of the brow. Brow pencil? No brow pencil. So we'll get at the other side. You know, you just want to be mindful of the gestures and the direction that you want your brow to kind of go in. And this is without maybe a little bit more at the arch, a little bit more at the base, tiny bit more at the front, definitely a heavier hand out at the end of the brow, just to take our long hairs and create a shadow that suggests a more defined arch and more definition. Now, this pencil is not darker than my brow hair color. It is a light brown from, I believe, a black owned brand, Meant It. I'll have to double check. It's made in Germany. It has a spoolie on one end, so we can also use this to finesse and fluff our brows, right? That little tail end is not actual hair, it's just pencil. And there's nothing in my brows besides ambition. Up we go, out we go. I don't trim my brow hairs, I kind of want maximum brow, right? When I'm at work, sometimes when I put um, either soap brow or that very good elf brow, I don't know if it's a brow glue or a brow freeze, something, it's the elf kind of dupe of the Anastasia brow freeze. But I do see that without any other makeup on, just brushing through the brows and then getting a little pencil in there, how do they say it? Creates a frame for the face. So soft brown from Minted, I believe is a yes. And from here, now there's a school of thought that says underpaint right? With highlighting, concealer, with contour, and then put a thin product like MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body. This is in the shade W4. I've never worn it before, but I have heard people speak with great love and admiration about the good things that this product does. So just adding a little filter action. Oh, that's weird <laughs> to our live. I kind of want to look enhanced, but not crazy. This is the one called pop. So you know, then they hit you with the, the sob story, whatever that is. You know, they want to tell you all about how they were abused as a child or abused in the modeling industry or whatever, but it kind of doesn't counteract the shady, the shady boots business that they were, that they've been up to for years here in Los Angeles, right? Um, there are all kinds of women who, you know, are from other lands, who've been caught up in, shall we say, lady business. And, you know, do it, get a certain amount of money, come to Hollywood, but then run the same kinds of lady business games. I can't, I, I'm just being vague, but, you know, it, it you can't, willfully walk into doing that kind of work, whether it's on a yacht or for a modeling agency. Yes, you're being exploited, but at a certain point you're you're participating in it. And I think it messes with people's minds um, to the point where, you know, they're just, again, like Ginger in, in Casino, always hustling, unable to form like real relationships with people, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, here's this... Uh, woman now claiming to a mutual friend that she's uh, suffering side effects. She's malingering because of the vaccine that she took back in 2020. It's like, okay, 
Maybe that's true. Good luck. Or it could just be some kind of manipulation for sympathy and attention and, you know, grabbing something from today's headlines so that you can seem worthy of sympathy, if you get what I'm meaning. I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to be entirely dismissive. I just know, you know, what I've gone through with this person and their capacity to misrepresent the truth. Let's call it that. In any case, I do have this Sephora S Clean Clean Glowing Skin Foundation in the shade 19, right? So, it looks like a very rich preparation, even though it is a it's a clean glowing skin foundation enriched with matcha tea and vitamin C. It hydrates skin, leaving a radiant finish and a light buildable coverage. So, in that sense, should we go in with some highlighting concealer and then get into some contour and then get get our Sephora experience rolling? Um, is my filter still on? What was it called? It was called pop. There we go. Now I'm even more yellow. <laughs> you know, sometimes I dabble with neutral foundations and I do wonder, am I neutral or am I warm? Am I some blend of the two? Because, you know, sometimes the makeup game, you can't necessarily get everything you want you kind of have to work with what you can get your hands on. And I think that's part of kind of growing into some level of artistry because, you know, being able to compensate for shades that are too pale or too dark. This is the light beige color of the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer Satin Finish. I think that's going to be plenty light enough for our under eyes. You know, again, this character who at work, got a little dot in our dish, was trying to tell me that he knows how to solve my under eye darkness. You know, same dude. If I'm being honest, I was assaulted by this character multiple times, but you know, like any woman who's ridden the New York City subway, you can't let stuff like that distract you or stop the show. You know, I'd be a fool to let this insignificant character um, overtake my experience at work. I have other things to do. I have other relationships and, you know, kind of good work to accomplish there. He really did, again and again, try to refocus my energy and my efforts on him, right? Negative attention to some of these little sociopaths is better than no attention. And they're going to go to any lengths to get your attention. You know, he would never know someone like me in normal life. He would never meet me out in the real world. So, you know, they feel like they hit a lick and they're trying to, they're trying to do anything they can to get it going. You know, your attention who knows what these people think when they're alone at home thinking of you? It's disturbing, right? Even though as actors we work in a controlled environment, that doesn't mean that it's not a it's not a background check kind of game, not unless you work with children. So, you know, some of these low lifey type dudes, I mean, even other men don't mess with this guy. Um you know, and it's known, and I've been warned for years. It's just that in the context of working with people, it's I'm not in charge. I don't decide who works there. I kind of have to just make it work. Just like this, you know, pale shade of concealer. We don't want it to go to waste. We use what's in our dish. But, you know, we can get it on our lids as an eyeshadow primer for this uh, very pale, basic kind of neutral palette. But, you know, just sort of enduring the distraction and the negativity and manipulation of this character, 
Yeah, it's just tiresome, right? And now he is free to go annoy other people. But I did not, I did not enjoy that. I didn't find it a plus. I didn't find it of any interest romantically. But, you know, these are the sorts of people that creep through society thinking that what they do is acceptable on any level, and it isn't. It just really isn't, and, you know. So that's very nice, right? You can still see my unconcealed skin color peeking through. A dog is barking outside, and a man is barking at his dog. So if that's the highlighting concealer, right, that we have put on from our friends at e.l.f., then... Next, we can get into some contour, right? And we have been loving all of these different, they're actually foundation sticks from our friends at Thread Beauty, Thread Cosmetics, made in Taiwan and Detroit, Michigan, right? Deepest Cool is the deepest, coolest shade, right? Should we get into the deepest cool or should we get into deep cool or rich brown cool? Let's go for rich brown cool so it's not so very extreme. So what will be the right brush, right? We've been trying to organize our brushes and, you know, I'm delighted that YouTube allowed me to hop off my live and get back on my live because I had a phone call. Someone I talked to a while ago and then they called me back but I was able to, you know, just sort of press buttons and not have to re-enter the title and all of that. So that's, that's a great thing. Things have progressed with the app. Sometimes I feel like, oh, <laughs> are these, you know, app updates serving me in any way? But today I feel, I feel served. Here is a Morphe times Jaclyn Hill, right? I was listening to some YouTube information about something like the rise and fall of Morphe and that their Jaclyn Hill and Jeffree Star collabs were felt to be the high point of quality and, you know, getting people in store to get product, but, you know, suggesting that the other collabs, the other troubled creators, let's put it like that, um, weren't nearly as, didn't, contribute nearly as much to the success of the brand. I do say I still do enjoy the Jeffree Star brushes that I have. I just got my hands on these uh, Jaclyn Hill brushes. I think people are asking questions about Jaclyn Hill and her some recent launch that seemed to, if not copy, then certainly resonate with the product and branding of a smaller brand. And, and that's certainly a song that we hear sung all over the cosmetics community, that larger brands is the word steal, are inspired by, hard to say. So again, this is purportedly cool. It says it's cool. They say, drag your contour up. Is that up toward the ear or up toward the eye, right? And then we're hoping that this little line going down our face will help sculpt and trim the face. There's been a lot of, <laughs> a lot of good eating on set. I will tell you that much. So you can feel your cheekbone and just look into your hand mirror to try to make the shape symmetrical, you know, and blend it out. Some people I see just sort of draw a V, right? A V, essentially. And if that's what we're doing, we're drawing essentially a V, maybe get a little bit more on there so we can drag it up. But this is a nice product. It's not too spreadable, so you know, you kind of have to work with it to kind of get it to disperse, but it doesn't go wild and, and kind of drift everywhere on your face to create a muddy look, right? We're trying to underpaint. 
underpaint in a way that looks like natural shadow, right? If we were sculpting our face out of clay, you know, those cops that reconstruct the faces of like missing or deceased people who were doing something like that. These muscles in our face, or like when people like do marathon running and they lose a lot of weight, you see partially it's the bone, but it's partially it's the muscle in the face that's revealed by weight loss, right? You'll be very proud of me. I actually went to the gym today, but I have to be honest, it took me a couple of days off from work to rest up to feel energetic enough to go and lift and, you know, put in work at the gym. I just was tired, honestly, right? So this brush has very precise angles on it, which makes it an interesting choice for streaking. Again, this color is rich brown cool. It's two shades. There are only two darker shades in this uh, brand. So trying to draw a V on the nose, right? So that it's lines that converge, not that go up and down, but creating like a very slender highlight area on the nose, right? I see people, <laughs> there's this one girl, where does she work? And she has a lot of makeup on and she makes a very broad brown line across the tip of her nose and it's not blended. And I don't know if it's because she forgot or what, but it looks, it looks about as crazy as my contour does now. But the point is that we're underpainting, we're underpainting the lightness we're trying to, you know, create some shadows on the underside of the nose. We're trying to be artistic about it. Drag the contour up into the brow. You know, Miss Jaclyn Hill, she keeps going. We've acquired a few more of her products. At work, I'm wearing some of her, you know, lip stains and whatnot, especially on days when, you know, we're on a romantic date in a restaurant for the television, right? It's Halloween, right? Think about the bone structure of your face. This looks crazy. Some people say create a frame around the whole jaw, right? So that you are, in essence, shrinking the amount of bright jaw area that jumps forward, right? That you're creating a line in front of the ear and on top of the jaw, not just under the jaw, to cancel out, you're trying to cancel out some of that flesh to give you a small elf-like face. And so you can put, take away some of the real estate of the forehead, thinking about where the most lifted part of the brow is, right? Right? Some people talk about taking some of your contour out from the crease out toward the brow. So if this is darkness, right? That kind of emphasizes the bone structure of the eye. And then you're taking it out and up the sides of the forehead, effectively shrinking the forehead and, and, you know, using a conservative amount of product and using the broad side of the brush to shrink the forehead in a subtle way, right? We could blend this further, right? Gently trying to make these lines and the structure look native to the face, right? The harsh evening light the nose contour, thinking about Jeffree Star, thinking about Luscious Massacre and all of the, you know, from Jackie Ina to just any number of different makeup gurus that we've watched. The theory being 
to take some of that real estate of the face away. Shrink it down to more, again, in the Western conception, more stylized, shrunken, feminine proportions, right? So interesting that in the West, currently, being smaller is thought of as feminine and being larger is thought of as masculine when clearly there are women who are taller and more of size. It's just a convention. It doesn't make it true. It's just a convention. Just, just like the way, you know, people currently try to define gender and, and try to do it in a way that doesn't acknowledge two-spirit people i.e. reality. Not everyone is, you know, straight in the way that people try to pretend is real. If it, if it were true, you know, there are certain aspects of the Bible that make it clear that, you know, culture and reality has been this way when it comes to gender expression for years, decades, centuries. So, you know, we can understand why people try to lie, but that doesn't make what they say the truth. It, it makes it what they want to be true. It's like, you know, it's like democracy in America. It's not that all of these people believe in one man, one vote. The electoral college wouldn't exist if that was the case, right? People try to finesse things so that smaller states and people who are a smaller part of the population have more influence than they, in a democratic sense, than they ought to. And those features of our democracy are certainly under review. You know, I just got off the phone with one of my friends in New York who's trying to argue that all of this Global Panini stuff is over. I really quite like the way that this product looks on the skin. In combination with the e.l.f. Camo Concealer as a highlighting concealer, this Rich Brown Cool Thread Cosmetics, it's actually a Face It Complexion Stick. It's like a stick foundation. Right? You can tap it into your skin to kind of like make it look more subtle, but the structure is there, right? Making sure to take time to build in all of the all of the contour elements that you really would like to have there, like in the eye area, right? Building it over the highlighting concealer that we used as uh, eyeshadow primer, right? Blending it in toward the brow tapping in our nose contour so it looks less like a a streak and a point. My fear is always that my contour is going to look too warm and it is sort of looking orange on my skin but maybe when we get our Sephora foundation on it'll look much more dope. I'm very happy with how it kind of blended out on my forehead. Does my face look tiny and elf-like? I think it might. I thought that one of my friends would hop on to this live with me, but I don't see them. Let me check. Live chat. Oh, you are here. Hello. I don't know how to communicate back in the chat. Welcome to live chat. All I can say is add moderator, put user in timeout. Anyway, hello, Cooper. Thanks for joining me. I'm Highlit, and I am contoured. Right? I was just talking about one of my, what is it, Hollywood scammer hat colleagues who now is, you know, reaching out to people to say that she's, I don't even want to use the word. She's making some very dramatic claims now that she's resurfaced. We're going to get into this eyeshadow palette, which is quite neutral and perfect for work. And we're going to get into one of these 
blush palettes. I think one of them is darker than the other. I think this purple one might be the darker one. So we should get into the lighter one. But we also put some pencil into our brows. This is the S Clean Sephora palette. In the, I guess the shade name is Candied, right? So this is Candied, not Candied. You know, Cooper is very well read, if y'all didn't know. And then this other palette is called Spiced. We're gonna get into Spiced and this other eyeshadow palette, probably in the AM. It's very, it's very gilt. It's very gold and bronze. And I guess this would be called Pewter. What do you think, Cooper? It's not silver. But this is what the contour is looking like. You know, it's always worth taking time to work on your blend, right? And you want the, light, the, the lighter places to jump forward. You want the darker places to recede and give you the effect of a, a tinier, more feminine face. Now, did we put highlighting concealer down the center of our nose? I don't know. Let's get a dot more and make sure that the bridge of our nose is highlit. It's the tiniest dot. Get it into our dish. Not too much. We don't want to waste it. We could actually use our sponge or finger. Um, let's see. Is Cooper saying anything? Chat viewing options. Top chat. Live chat. Yo. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I see. Uh-oh. What does that mean? Hmm. Cancel. Okay. Well, that's that. Using our little flexi sponge silicone. Got it on our sponge. We're just trying to make the very thinnest pale line down the center of our nose. Just with concealer. Not with highlighter. Nothing crazy but just to give us that pop and dimension. What is this brown that I have on my fingers? Is this stray? Is it stray? Contour? Is that what happened? Can't imagine where else it would have come from. In any case, we're not trying to waste a thing. Intensify that cheekbone contour, right? So that the upper part of the cheekbone remains light. Use our finger, I guess. Highlight the brow above our contour, right? Stylizing the face, right? So many people, uh, you know, who work in television will come to work with a bare face because of the global panini, often people will not touch us, right? Will not touch up our face, will not, you know, give us jewelry. It just depends what the budget and the staffing allows. Just shaking this shade number 19, we're going to hopefully try to get a sheer layer of it over our contour and highlight, right? This is the moment. And now we're going to try to get some of this in our dish. It says that it's light buildable coverage. So just a respectable amount in there. And then back to our same non-absorbent sponge with our mirror, right? We want to make this contrast a little bit less stark. Hopefully this color is one that will let us do it, right? So we stamp that over and just pat it in. Oh, that's lovely, right? So just from a very gentle application, it didn't obliterate the highlight and the contour, but it just made it more subtle. Again, we didn't know if this color of this foundation would be the best choice, but as is often the case, we have to work with what we can get. Right? I went to the opening of Sephora in Burbank 
everything was brand new, freshly stocked and all of that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're looking to, you know, invest at full price. I'm still in the exploratory stage. I did, you know, I have a lot of respect for the kind of higher end experience that Sephora gives. I feel like Ulta is a more budget friendly set of brands and options, but you know, all of the staff, beautiful and helpful, you know, but these are businesses. I think that looks incredible. What do you think? Cooper, what do you think? The theory checks out, right? I could put more on, right? I could do another light layer, but I don't think it's necessary. But just to underpaint with contour and highlight, you already have your brightening concealer under the eye as an eyeshadow base, brightening that chin to bring it forward, brightening the brow bone, the center of the forehead, the center of the nose, right? You just tap over it with a subtle, sheer foundation, right? Just taking our sponge and dimping it in our handy dandy bowl of water just to moisten and tap out any creasing under the eye, right? Always keep a little water handy. Always keep your sponges handy. And I feel like the trick of the beauty sponge, whether that's a beauty blender or not, is to pull off, people say blend, but I think it's to pull off excess product that gets to looking textured and crazy. But what's hap what's nice about these, this combo of products, those eye eyebrows are still strong. There's nothing else on the face. Look how beautiful, look how perfected, right? emphasizing the structure in the face and the muscles, brightening the center of that jaw, but just shaving it down, shaving it down at the back, on the bottom, and in the front. I don't think it's changed the shape of my nose, but I don't, I don't hate my nose. I am using my front camera, so maybe I don't look the way I actually look, but I think as a combination of complexion products, e.l.f. Thread Cosmetics to underpaint, and then this gorgeous Sephora S Clean, Clean Glowing Skin Foundation. The packaging makes it look like tinted moisturizer, but it says that it has a radiant finish. Radiant, not glowy, right? You look healthy, you look moist, not matte, not dry, light buildable coverage. I'm very happy with this. I recommend. So from here, we have eyeshadow to get into. I grabbed this, I think when I was on the checkout line at Marshall's or one of those shops. It still does have its little condom inside. So we set that aside and we have a set of basics. This is the perfect, you know, it's really the perfect palette to travel with, you know, if you're just going to work and you're gonna play like a lawyer or something, it's fine. It's perfect, right? And just taking this Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH33 brush, right? Looking at our lids, looking into our palette mirror, just trying to blend out any eyelid creasing, but we're also going to use this very sizable palest shade. Is this gonna work for our skin? Well. The moment of truth is here. We're gonna tap that across the entire lid and it's it's actually quite wonderful. It looks more taupe on the skin than it appears in the pant. Now again, we used a very light concealer to prime the lids, right? We highlight the brow bone, we created some structure with our contour shade, right? And now we are getting our transition shade, base shade, however you want to call it. We are getting it on and we are lifting it out toward the temple, right? Up toward the brow, all over that lid. I'm very happy with this. If I just put that on, I wouldn't be mad, right? Other side 
tap, 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 tap. Are we getting fallout? I don't think so. A little late night makeup. What's Cooper saying? Live chat. He said, yo. I don't know. How am I supposed to be able to chat back? Hmm. I don't know. But I'm glad to see you're here. Um... You know, we're just trying to empower ourselves with makeup so that when it's crunch time and we need to get out the door, we know that we can do a credible, neutral look and really stylize that lid, right? Get a little on the brush, squeeze the brush and get it along the lash line to set along that lash line, right? We're not going to the club. It's Sunday night. We have to go take a COVID test tomorrow. And that's about it. And then we'll be back doing what we love, which is what? Social media. Cooper's been encouraging me to, you know, get serious about it, be consistent about it. So that's what I'm trying to do. The same brush, I believe we can dip into Maybe not the darkest shade, but a darker shade. Maybe we'll get into this kind of chestnutty color. I don't see any shade names or anything like that. And just get that on our outer, our outer third, right? Here on the outer third of my eye. Whenever I go to the gym, sometimes I'll just quickly test palettes. And all I do with my eye open is dip into a color and then just brush it in toward, toward the kind of like outer third of my eye. And that's kind of enough, you see the difference, to create a little bit of structure, right? That you're not necessarily going for the darkest shade, but you're using your technique, the point of the brush. Try not to dirty up a million brushes. We're not doing an intricate look, but we do want to think about extending that shape and lifting it toward the artificially long tail of our brows. And we did do our brows first, and I'm not mad. We did not ruin it with our complexion products, and that's progress, right? You don't have to necessarily put on so much product that you wreck products that you put on before. You just have to be strategic and mindful. And, you know, think about the balance of your face. You don't need to have every color in every, everything doesn't have to be as strong, right? You just wanna look at your eye with your eye open, make sure your deeper shade is showing above your crease and that it's lifting out toward the brow tail and that you've put enough along the lash line and it's giving you, you know, a smoky effect something enchanting, something that you could look over a glass of Pinot at dinner, having some sushi somewhere in Southern California. And Cooper says there's really no global panini crisis in NY right now. I really, I don't really know what to think about that information. Certainly the story coming from Austria, the story of excess, shall we say, angels in Australia, the recent shutdown in Shanghai would suggest that there's something on the horizon that's not cute, that is not an indication for, you know, getting a table at the Playboy Club. <laughs> it would be fun but there might be a certain amount of risk attached to it, right? Looking into our mirror, and I just, I don't know that the monitor is picking up just how strong these colors that look, you know, kind of boring and plain and monochromatic almost in the pan, they are looking very dramatic. They are giving me, they are really giving me luxury. The way that these colors are kind of building Together, they're different enough from my skin tone that I feel like 
they look quite strong and beautiful, right? And don't we all want to look strong and beautiful and have some structure in the outer V of our eye? Have we taken our eyeshadow too high? Should we have kept it more kind of tucked into the very V of our lid? We've been a little generous with it. We can definitely think about that next time, but in neutral tones, right? These seem like shades that Tati Westbrook would be very happy with, right? We can squeeze our brush and take it under the outer third of the eye under the outer third of the eye. You know, in the real world, we don't necessarily get to use a whole bunch of different brushes. Here's a pencil brush. Should we use that to get into the darkest shade? Or should we actually use some sort of liner brush? Let's try a liner brush. Right, so if we get our brush into this darkest brown shade and kind of tap it along our eye corner. Hmm, there's some kind of alarm going outside. All right, tap it along tail of our eye lifting out toward our enhanced brow tail, right? A powder liner, right? Should we have lined our eyes first with a pencil? Perhaps. But, you know, it's late at night. Maybe we don't do all the things. We're using the same brush, it's got a very precise tip. I hope you can see that, right? Just learning how to exploit our collection of brushes, stamping an inner corner flick with this brush, right? Just that subtle application of dark color gives us a little bit of extension and a little bit of flair to our eye. So it's not the plain old eye Oh, it's got a little bit of drama happening in a way that suggests the shape of a lash, right? Some people wear false lashes or a half of a lash or mascara every day, all right? Even when they're playing law enforcement on television. And I think that's fine, except that sometimes it's just too much. You're going to be clocked and... Unless you're, you know, main cast, getting clocked, wearing a lot of makeup. It's like when you're a stand-in. I don't think you should necessarily wear a lot of makeup because it, it kind of competes with your actress. You know, I think that's for anyone who's standing in for a woman or like a woman presenting actor. You don't want to try too hard, right? It's like if you're standing in for someone who's wearing a red swimsuit, that doesn't mean that you should wear a red swimsuit. You should just wear a red tank top and pants. You know, you sh if they're wearing heels, maybe you wear a wedge, right? It's not necessarily a heel because you just want the height, but you're not trying to create confusion about who the cast member is, right? Doesn't that look nice? Now it's time to put on a little inner corner shimmer, right? And this palette gives us, feels like one is a glitter. Let's see what it says on the back. It says, wearable neutrals with floral inspired pops of color. I don't see any floral inspired. I see a bunch of neutrals. It says creamy matte, shimmer, and metallic, right? So we definitely have four mattes. One, two, three, four. This seems like a glitter. It says shimmer and metallic. So maybe this one that's more like a glitter here, this gold, 
is the glitter and these are shimmer. They're very subtle. So let's go for, let's go for this very exciting gold shimmer, right? This is what the eyes are looking like. We could add a half lash. We could add a liner. I don't even think it's necessary, right? I'm going to work, brunch with the girls, but look at this cheek contour, right? I think I have a round face. Not anymore. This contour has gotten me in the chiseled face game and I love it, you know? So from here, if we take this Eco Tools flat applicator brush, it's double-ended with this silicone eye soother. I don't know what that's for. Maybe it's to put on, you know, eye cream or something, but take our brush, stroke it into this gold, get it on the little cat paw, and let's start by keeping it just to the lid, right? Bringing light into the inner corner of the eye and putting that on top of our dark liner. We could have done our shimmer or glitter before we did our liner, but you know, sometimes things get a little different than our plan. Do you see the difference, right? There's more to reflect light back in that inner corner. I like to extend my glitter more at the top than at the bottom. So it kind of reaches out like the wing of a bird. That looks incredible to me. I'm really glad I, gla I grabbed this palette. I didn't really know what to expect from it. I feel like the cover made me think it would be more kind of pink or mauve, but I'm not unhappy that it isn't. I mean, there's just something very austere about these shades. They really highlight the quality of your skin and the quality of your technique. You don't need to be super precise, but you're gonna get a really nice quality payoff you wouldn't be embarrassed to wear this palette in front of anyone. It makes you look smart. It makes you look like you know how to do your makeup. Your brows aren't crazy. You're not like putting on a bunch of clockable mascara. You're not putting on a bunch of clockable. It's glam, but it's lady glam, right? You're not looking like you're doing too much. I feel like this is a this is one of the most righteous palettes I've ever stumbled across. I love bloom. I don't really see a lot of bloom because we're browns and tans, but Sephora is definitely worth a look. I, I really felt like, oh, I'm I'm grabbing, you know, the store brand of makeup, but this is this is some quality product. So here we have this exciting Blush palette. Now, people talk about draping your blush, velvety soft. Hybrid cream to powder blushes create a natural and seamless flush that lasts throughout the day. Dab onto cheeks and blend using fingertips or brush. Enriched with plant-derived squalane. Now, what is squalane? I think it's some sort of emollient, right? Look, contoured the crap out of these cheeks. And the eyeshadow is... I didn't even take a brush and blend it. That's incredible, right? Face is sculpted, right? The natural lip. Let's go for the palest shade in this blush palette, right? The little house opens up. We got a lot of choices. The very palest shade may not, in fact, show up on us. It looks very different on the viewfinder than it does in real life. It, on this, in the palette, it looks kind of like the color of my lips. So taking an angled blush brush and spinning it just to get a little, a little on that brush. Look, right? We could dab it on the back of our hand. I'm looking in here like as if there's a mirror, but there isn't. It says cream to powder, right? Looking at where our contour is, Right, looking at the angle of this brush, dancing it across the cheek. 
I almost thought it was going to be too much. Keeping the blush high on the cheek. It is pink, right? There was that whole discussion about bringing your blush up into the eye area. Blush, no blush. I say blush. It's buildable. Right, you wanna look intelligent around, about your makeup, especially if you're at work, if you wanna look pretty and you wanna look done, not done like, not done like Staten Island done, not done like makeup screaming at the top of its lungs, but done like you're a smart lady who knows how to do her makeup, right? If you were going to a meeting, to a brunch, enough makeup, right? Palest shade, so now we know the palest shade gives us payoff, right? Dance it across the nose as if we're a little bit pink from sun exposure. Across the top of the forehead. Giving the face a sense of completeness, of unity, All right? Marrying that blush into that contour. taking the tip of that blush brush, getting some product on there, stamping it into the center of our eyeshadow for color unity, right? Another layer, something to enhance all the angles of the face. You have to think of yourself like an old time um, Hollywood movie star, right? You really have to um, believe that your face, your bone structure, the way you look is valuable. You cannot get into this frame of mind where people think that the goal is to look like someone else, right? We could add highlighter to this look, but look how subtle and beautiful this eyeshadow looks, even without taking a brush and blending it. Look how beautiful this the finish of this complexion product. It says radiant finish. I believe that radiant for me is much more comfortable than the e.l.f. halo glow glowiness or the Anastasia of Beverly Hills luminous. Radiant seems like a place where I could live, I could comfortably be here and go one step beyond the matte that I love so much. What is that product that I like? It's the, I think it's the Maybelline. Four in one perfecter. This is my go-to in the shade light medium to go to work, but I feel like this radiant finish, it's giving. It's giving, I feel excited about it. And now for Cooper, if he's still with us, he did say, yo, I'm about to get into what he requested, which was black lipstick, right? Before we get our black on, this is the Ivani Gregg Morphe collab in the shade. Matte. I don't think there's a shade name. Maybe there was, but there isn't anymore. It's a black and it is black. But before we get that black on, is there any other lip color that we might like to try? Well, we do have a series of lip liners from Minted. And the colors are Dope, Bare, and Nude, right? But we also have this lipstick called Dope Taupe. So maybe we'll try the shade Dope throw the others on the floor, right? And then we'll get on the lip liner and the lipstick, see how that goes, and then we'll go black. Because what? Halloween is coming, and our very loyal friend and viewer, Cooper, 
I really like this. Um, again, we're looking to balance out the eye and cheek colors. And then this has the strength and beauty of nude. All right. It's so liberating, you know, especially as a woman of color to have access to, you know, shades that are built for us. On occasion, I do get my paws on things that aren't made for me or my skin tone. And <laughs> just, you can't even make it work with like a liner. It's so, ooh. Ooh, I just put it out into the hall in the free area just to let others enjoy because I can't. So making a little X at the lip, a few lines going in just to echo back to the natural lines of the lip. All right, I'm just trying to create some balance with, you know, the colors that we've applied to our face so they don't look so jarringly unnatural, right? So kind of more of a soft glam, more of a, you know, kind of like camera ready, zoom, camera ready, law enforcement, camera ready. Uh, this is dope taupe, right? That's how it looks in the bullet. Pull out our little hand mirror. Tap that on. Oh, that looks pretty. I feel like Mented does some really nice conservative nude and brown colors because, you know, often when I've gone to other brands for nudes or even tones of brown, there's just so much saturation. There's not enough pop between, you know, I got into those, one of those, those matte lip, liquid lips that looked gray and mauve and casket ready on my skin and I feel like wow taupe and nude that on my skin it it's a subtle color right it balances out the colors that I put on the rest of my face it's pretty without being overwhelming right use our finger just to tap it in and then the moment of truth when we go over it in black for Mr. Cooper, right? Not too shiny, right? We could add some of the color from our finger to our cheek. Give us some color unity. I really don't know if I've done anything of value with my nose contour, <laughs> but that's okay. We're gonna keep working at it. I don't know if the problem is that I'm using my front camera and not my back camera and it's not really showing but I think my cheek contour is miles ahead and we didn't even use the darkest shade so Cooper for you this Avani Greg with Morphe collab black are we ready I don't even know if we should pull off any of our lipstick to get this on but let's let's give it a whirl from dope taupe to black here we go little Halloween moment. I look like I'm gonna go to a concert. This is a very nice black. It's not drying. It's definitely giving. <laughs> Happy now, Cooper? I think that looks incredible, actually. You know, where are you going in black lipstick, right? If you can be at the punk club, 
it really definitely brings out your skin tone in a very different way, right? I'm just wearing like a random t-shirt, but you know, I, I have seen some incredible tutorials on TikTok with people kind of setting off black lipstick with, you know, just sort of a, a cheek stain and a mascara. It makes your teeth look super white. That's always good. But, um, so that's that. That's, that's the black lipstick over dope taupe look. What do you think? Cooper, I'm very interested to hear your opinion and I will try to take a photo to use as a thumbnail for this makeup exploration. But thank you for joining me here. Thank you for listening to all of my um, yapping about different matters and I will join you tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, to get into these other shades of the S Clean products from Sephora. Very happy with them. And um, I bid you good night. All right, see you next time. Thanks a lot for joining me. Be well, stay safe. I hope the Global Panini does not touch any of us. Does this lipstick even need a gloss? I don't know. And it's not really getting on my teeth, which I love. Look at that cheek. Oh my goodness. Look at those lids. Oh my goodness. We're definitely improving. I mean, I have to say, like, practice makes perfect. I don't think that I have the nerve to claim that I'm a, you know, a guru, but I'm definitely an explorer. Um, and, you know, we, we try to kind of test out all the things that we have in our collection, just so that when we want to step out or step on camera we kind of have more of an idea of what we're doing so that you know we look cute and smart anyway here i go until next time this is tanya at house of tanya inviting you to celebrate your looks and you know enjoy every moment that you have to spend on camera off camera but definitely you know think of think of all the good things that are possible and that you have a real opportunity to create art with your clothing, with your face, with your hair, with your style, with your voice and your expression every day. And it's so powerful and so valuable, you know, that you can give the gift of feeling and the, the gift of drama and delight to your viewers and the people that you encounter in your, in your day, in your life, in your work. All right, so get busy with it <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye.